What stunned me, first of all, is how good Carlsen is in those openings that he rarely uses, such as French defense. Understanding of the pawn structure, then strategic needs of the situation, those are the things he's absolutely dominating at. This time his victim is Anish Giri, leading white pieces. He opened with e4, and we got Vinover French with bishop b4. e5, c5, this is the main line, a3, bishop takes c3, pawn takes c3. And then Carlsen kind of surprised with the move knight c6. Normally you have either queen c7 or knight e7. And those two main moves are actually played because... Uh, Black wants to do something about these four squares, which are really weak when there is no bishop standing on f8 defending g7. It's a typical situation where white wants to bring the queen in, like this, and that's exactly what Kiri did. And now there is a huge problem for black. King f8 is really ugly to play. And uh, how can you defend a pawn on g7? If you play g6, which happened in the game, you definitely get really weaknesses everywhere on the king's side and dark squares, and you don't have the dark square bishop. That's the reason why the move that black can play is queen c7. Queen g4 can be met by a very interesting solution, either f6, defending pawn on g7 using the queen, or f5, also a good solution, because again, the pawn is guarded by the queen. Back to the game, we got knight c6 and then queen g4, as we said, g6. And this g6 is typically attacked by h4, and exactly what Giri did here. The response by black is h6, preparing to react to h5 with the g5. Now, this g5 and h6, they're kind of taking the role of the dark square bishop. They're kind of controlling the dark squares. Seems good, but what if white, that's what Giri did here, breaks the formation with f4? Well, Carlsen and some other guys before him actually already playing this position played f5. This is a very good move and probably the only move actually strategically speaking. Otherwise, black is simply lost. The thing is, white cannot take this way because indeed the knight can take the pawn. I think it's completely fine and the game is better for black. But there is also e5 attacking the queen with the bishop from c8 suddenly. That bishop is typically dead in the French. But now after queen e2, look at the queen standing in front of the bishop. Black goes calmly to take the pawn on f6. And then after f takes c, the knight goes to e4, beautifully posted, threatening to get to g3, possibly c3. It's in commanding position. The game is much better here for black, almost winning. Going back to our situation, white is not taking on f6 for sure, but moving the queen to g3. Now black goes for g4, and that's creating a serious stability for black on the king side. This pawn chain from e6 ending up on g4. They're really nicely closing those possible operations of white on the king side that are typically done in the French. And currently looking at the white's pieces, you can see that white has the bishop pair. And having a bishop pair, well, you know what you do. You have diagonals to open. And also, there is a concrete threat by black we would like to be aware of, and that's to completely shut down the bishop on f1. If you're guessing and you think the c4 is the move, that's exactly why Giri took the pawn on c5. And now Carlsen went for queen a5, not that much for winning the pawn on c5, but because the queen is putting pressure here on c3 and a3 as well, and c5, and he can go potentially even to a4 and control the fourth rank and attack c2. This is what I typically do in the French Finnever as black. Knight e2 developing and protecting c3. And now knight g7, of course, black is also doing the same thing. And a4. Now, this a4 is very clever because in case of queen takes pawn, there is bishop a3. The bishop gets to a long diagonal and also cannot really find a better spot after the pawn is taken. But you see, this after the pawn is taken means that black maybe doesn't want to take the pawn. So what we had here is a very interesting b6. Carlsen thought, if I give up this pawn on the a file for the pawn on c5, I'm gonna get the rook active, I'm gonna get the bishop quickly to a6, I'm not giving white a tempo against my queen on c5, so it's worth it. White went for king f2, which is again very logical here, the pawn is unpinned on c3 and it maybe can go to c4, and uh, the king as well is hiding potentially on the king's side on h2. Now, after king f2, bishop a6, that's the idea of b6, one of those. Queen e3, because the queen was not active that much on j3, she is now eyeing this b6, that is, theoretically speaking, a weakness, 
but also she's kind of preventing black's queen from getting centralized on c5, potentially hitting the white's king as well. This time, the queen's going to be taken, and after b takes c, the a pawn becomes a pass pawn. Plus, the c5 pawn of black is going to be preventing black's rooks from attacking white's pawns. Okay, we've got king f7. Of course, black is not rushing anywhere, just activating the other rook from h8, coming to c8 most likely. And bishop d2. Now, this is something serious. White is preparing to c4. He's also possibly preparing knight e4. Definitely a sign that the queen is not really too safe on a5. And that's why we got by Carlsen bishop c4, preventing the pawn from moving. We got knight e4 in case of trading, which I guess black could have done. You are undoubling the pawns. But still, white's pawn formation is pretty ugly. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we got knight e4 and black didn't take but played queen c5. Carlsen, I guess, didn't see this move knight b5 which, first of all, intends to come with the knight to d6. The knight becomes a very powerful piece there. But more importantly, look at the black queen. She has no squares to run to. And if she gets traded on c5 like this, the pawn moves to c5 and leaves the pawn on a file to be a pass pawn. So Carlsen decided to go for bishop takes b5. Of course, now Giri is going to trade the queens and move the black pawn from b6 to c5. Good news again for white. And then bishop takes b5. There is no other way. A takes b, just losing the rook. Now, a move that Engine really doesn't like, and that's knight a7. Carlsen was preparing a nice strategic trick. Rook h to b1 and rook h to b8. This was the moment actually where white could go with c4 and try to destroy the center of black and open the game, getting the bishops active. But you see, Giri made a huge positional mistake moving the bishop back to e2. It is a blunder, strategically speaking. But I don't want to say what's the real way to exploit it. Just play first rook takes, rook takes. And now you can maybe try to guess how black punishes the move bishop e2. Suddenly, the game is going to be completely turning in black's favor. Can you find the way? You know that the bishops, they like space, open diagonals. There is a move for black and suddenly one of the bishops of white is going to be completely locked. There is no way to use it later anyhow to attack anything in black's camp. And that move is of course c4. And it's about the light square bishop. It's terrible. It's just dead to the rest of the game. Now what's the black's task? Basically to just navigate the knights to the best possible squares, win the pawn on a4 and start attacking with two knights versus whatever target is, and simply white is not going to be able to defend it, playing with a one piece less practically. Carlsen started with knight a to c6, just improving the knight for the time being, and attacking the pawn on a4, which is going to be defended by rook a1 and king e8. No rush, the king is going to be involved. King e1 and king d7. Bishop f2, potentially the bishop is going this way. Knight c8, Carson just ignores that and is basically about to target the pawn a file. So we go bishop c5 after king c7 to prepare knight b6. The strategy I think that Giri had with the bishop c5 was to go with bishop to b4 and after knight b6 to push a5. The pawn for the time being is protected by the bishop and the rook. It cannot be taken yet. But then this knight and the other one, they're going to be just navigating wherever they want to be, they're going to get while white's bishops are going to stay where they are. One defending the pawn, functioning like a bigger pawn, the other one not being alive at all. So the knights are going to get somewhere where they want eventually to be. Say knight e7. After that, let's say g3, knight e8. Bishop f1, let's say knight b7. Black is maneuvering while white is just staying on the same spot. And then look at this, knight d to c5. Suddenly the knight is coming to e4 and the game is going to be over. If the bishop takes, doesn't matter, the knight takes and then this pawn is going to be only defended by the rook. Black can just easily get a pawn afterwards. The other way would be just to go with the knight to b8 instead and then target the pawn this way and finally take it. If it moves, it's going to be on the light square. The bishop is going to be unable to defend it afterwards. So let's go back. And here we had a decision by Anish Giri to actually let go of this pawn which is not a bad strategy actually. He played a5 immediately so that he can play bishop f8 and now the pawn h6 is falling. 
but Carlsen knew that and he was prepared playing king d7 after bishop h6 king e8 and now look at the bishop on the dark squares it's gonna get away it's getting to g5 it can go to d8 afterwards or h4 but uh, this pawn is asking for protection by the bishop on the dark squares and if the bishop stays near the pawn it's not going to be able to help the queenside pawns and that's exactly what Carlson was thinking about maybe he gave this pawn on purpose he could maybe do something about defending it first and then going for the other pawn on the a file but this way he kind of wanted psychologically to maybe make giri think of defending the h pawn so that the bishop is going to be like caged in as well and that's exactly what happened here we got king d2, king f7. You see, the king of black is needed here to protect against the pawn promoting at a certain point, but also it's there because it wants to win the pawn when the bishop is gone. Bishop g5, maybe I'm going to go for h6, but not really yet because that's going to allow king g6 and the pawn is going to fall. One of the knights are going to be brought there to attack the pawn for the second time. So, white is thinking I can keep my bishop here, pawn there, and I'm not allowing this king to approach my pawn that's correct but the bishop needs to stay there you see the bishop is required meanwhile black is gonna navigate to attack the weakest spot in white's camp on the queen side and what's that we have two pawns that are isolated and both of them are weak but one is weaker one is the target for black and which one is that the one that can be not easily attacked or it's easier to attack but the one that is more difficult to defend and when you think about it, white has a light square bishop and a king. The bishop can go to d1 and get a purpose, defending the pawn on c2. But the c3 pawn cannot be defended by that bishop, only by the other one, which is busy defending the pawn on h file. So, the c3 pawn is going to be attacked by one knight being on b5 and the other one on a4. And that's exactly what Carlsen started doing. First knight c6, king c1, knight b6, that knight is coming to a4, and then... The other knight going to b5, as we said, knight a7, bishop g5, white is not doing anything, just standing on the same place. King g7, I think Carlson was thinking, and he was actually completely right, that white can take this pawn on g4, you see, at a certain point, give a purpose to this dead bishop, and that after f take g, f5, pawn takes e6, two pawns together with the bishop, they can sometimes really be difficult to prevent from promoting. So Carlson was thinking, king is going to be standing on the right side to hold the pawn that is further away and the central pawn is going to be there for the knights to stop. That was the point of king g7, although I'm not really sure that it was really required because the h pawn is really far away from promoting. So you could maybe keep the king on f7. However, after king g7, Anish played bishop f1 and he resigned because there is no bishop g4 afterwards. The knights are coming back into the game, I mean, closer to the center, and the pawn is falling. Everything is just lost afterwards. I like this idea more, even. Knight c5, knight e4. I think it's really devastating in that case. In any case, this game is beautiful because of this example, this moment when black played. Not stunning, not difficult move to play, but the picture that was created on the board after c4 is really beautiful. Five pawns of black completely shutting down white's bishop. Thanks for watching and see you in the comment section.